Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a very different video because this is a collab video. So I am collaborating with Sarah Newbury of The Art Hive. If you haven't checked out her channel then do make sure you go ahead because you can see her version of the collaboration over there. Just make sure that you follow the, her link in the description below and make sure you subscribe and make sure you tick on her notifications as well. So I very first met Sarah in real life at Summer in the City about a month and a half ago now and whilst we was there we saw Jamie Jo or Banana Germana's um, gallery and she, if you're not aware of her channel, probably some of you are, she does amazing massive acrylic and oil paintings and they are like so good to see up close in person. When Sarah and I first saw these we said oh wouldn't this be a good challenge to do as a collaboration and that's what we decided to do. We decided to play with acrylics on large scale and try to kind of channel our inner Jamie Jo and create something large scale with something that we haven't really used before. And thus the collaboration idea was born and we decided or Sarah asked me what we what we thought the theme should be and I thought that it would be a good idea to do kind of fish and then we kind of later developed it into sea life so that's the theme for this collaboration it's a really exciting theme because it's not one that i actually get to draw very often in colored pencil so i thought why not tackle this in acrylic paint so with this theme in mind i immediately had like a couple of ideas floating around in my head i wanted to kind of First of all, do some kind of tropical fish. I did think about doing a beta fish and then I thought, no, that's a little bit too generic. And then I kind of developed my ideas further. And then when I was at the range, if you don't know what the range is, it's kind of like a home store here in the UK. I went to the range and I was looking in their arts department and I was looking at all the different kind of canvases that I could use for this particular project and I stumbled across this one that was 30 by 60 centimetres. It was a really nice long rectangle and I thought, hmm, this would be a really good piece to do like a jellyfish on. So I decided to settle on the jellyfish as you can see here. So once I've chosen my canvas I then decided to go and pick some paint and the paint that I actually used for this was a mixture it was the Winsor & Newton Professional I used a few of their professional acrylics I also used some Liquitex basics and I also used some golden fluid acrylics the main colors that I used in the Winsor & Newton Professional were uh, magenta uh, quinacridone magenta Dioxazine purple, Mars black, silver and titanium white. They're the main colours that I used for this piece. I also used some uh, cobalt blue hue from the Liquitex Basics and I also used this really lovely Interference Violet by the Golden Fluid Acrylics and oh my god this is amazing. I've had a little play with uh, Golden Acrylics before and I've really liked their formula, they really, they're really nice and flowy, they kind of go a really long way so I saw this on Jackson's Art Supplies and I was like oh my god that's gonna be so great for a jellyfish so I picked some of that up as well. I also got some of the Galeria acrylic mediums. I got the iridescent medium and I mixed that a little bit with my paint to create some effects which I will explain about a little bit later. So I started off this process as you've probably seen from the footage. I started off this process just by playing around in my sketchbook. So for this I decided to really kind of put some thought behind it and I really wanted to play with some of the colours that I'd chosen to kind of see what I could create, see what kind of combinations I could get and just see how all the different paints kind of lay over one another. So I did some forward planning which is most unusual for me especially in a sketchbook. Usually when I forward plan I just kind of do it on a scrap piece of paper but I decided to actually utilise my sketchbook for this. Just had a really nice fun time just seeing how all of these materials would work with one another. I tried and tested how the iridescent medium worked with all of the different paints that I wanted to use and I also added a little bit of the iridescent medium into a varnish which I bought because I had a fun idea to kind of add a little bit of sparkle to the jellyfish at the end. 
um, I just played with that. I saw how the interference violet pinks kind of played over white areas and dark areas and just kind of saw what kind of effects that I could create, kind of the, the colour shifts that would be apparent over different colours as well. So when planning this I knew that I was obviously going to use the pink and the purple because pink and purple are kind of really iconic jellyfish colours along with a little bit of blue so I wanted to see how that interference violet would play over those colours. I also did some planning just by sketching different parts of the jellyfish just kind of getting myself familiar with the anatomy and kind of seeing how that inner like the central part the really kind of flowy kind of almost like ribbony look looking things in the jellyfish. I'm just playing and seeing and drawing and kind of imagining how they would kind of fall in the water and just having lots of fun. I used a few different mediums as well to try and get myself familiar with that concept of the jellyfish. So once I'd done that I decided to then crack on with the actual piece and before I explain about my piece let me just let you guys know I haven't seen Sarah's piece, she hasn't seen mine so as soon as these videos are going live we're going to watch each other's videos so I'm going to be seeing Sarah's piece as you are seeing Sarah's piece as well so that's really exciting for me. So my jellyfish. I decided that I would put the jellyfish on a black background or not necessarily a black background. Uh, I wanted a dark background so that I could kind of get that really iridescent kind of really glowy effect of the jellyfish. I wanted this jellyfish in the kind of deep depths of the sea and I just wanted it to kind of be illuminated so that's the kind of concept that I had in my mind when I was going through with this. So to do my background I mixed up some of the purple and the pink and I also added in touches of the black and when I was adding the background I made sure that the edges of the canvas, the very corners, were the darkest and then as you kind of got in towards the jellyfish and in between all the little tendrils and everything I wanted that to kind of have more of those pink, purple and blue tones showing through so I lessened the amount of black mixed in with the paint in those areas so that you would get that kind of glowing effect and I think it actually ended up working really well when I first thought of filling a large canvas with acrylic paint like this it was kind of a little bit daunting because I thought oh my god backgrounds I am not a background person what on earth am I gonna do and to be honest I probably could have painted like a whole intricate scene but I feel like the kind of feel and the vibe that I was going for with this jellyfish it the black background kind of kind of fitted a lot better than having like intricate kind of sea kind of details and that kind of thing. You guys might think it's a little bit of a cop out just adding like dark colours in the background but for my vision I think this worked well. So as I mentioned I really wanted the jellyfish to kind of be this really glowing body within the water so I wanted to make sure that I kind of mixed up light and dark colours so that I could convey that really well on my canvas. So I started by mixing this kind of really light pink kind of fleshy tone and then kind of mixing and merging that into this darker pink tone towards the top and to the sides and then on the very outer edges you've kind of got that purple where you've kind of got that water kind of being reflected in that kind of semi-opaque body of the jellyfish and I think that works really well and I used some block areas of the white paint to just add a little bit of shine here and there and just to kind of make him look semi-opaque. What's the word I'm looking for there? Translucent. Yeah, I wanted to make him look translucent as possible so I wanted to make sure that I had those darker colours present on the edges and a little bit in the background of that kind of in that top kind of jelly section. I just wanted to make sure you could kind of see the colours of the background so that he had that translucent nature so that's why I added the purple around there. My painting technique for this was different to how I usually paint. So if you have tuned in to a couple of my past live streams, you'd have seen that I was working on an acrylic paint. So I kind of had a little bit of a leg up when it come to the jellyfish. Uh, but you would have seen my painting style was kind of more like, um, like a stippling kind of nature like, to give it a little bit of texture. Whereas that really wasn't going to be like ideal to create a jellyfish because they're really nice and smooth and the, the sea, the the black background needed to be really nice and smooth as well so I kind of had to change up my technique and I just used some kind of broad strokes I use a really nice big brush for this as well 
and instead of that stippling effect I just kind of pasted down the paint and I didn't try and blend it like really thoroughly either that's something that I really had to kind of get my head around because I'm used to working with coloured pencils and really blending the colours out and getting really nice smooth gradations of colour whereas acrylic paint and paintings in general you don't always tend to need to do that you kind of just need to have like the brush strokes down there is, is the technique I'm looking for, like impasto or something like that, I'm, I'm not sure. Drop a comment down below if you know the technique of where you just kind of have broad areas of paint. I'm sure it's impasto, but I haven't really done my research for that. But I just use that kind of technique for this and just, when you look at it from afar, you can see that the colors kind of blend together, but when you kind of look at it up close, you can see that there are areas of color which aren't blended and I like that effect. I actually, really liked it which I surprised myself with. So when it comes to those inner sections, those kind of ribbony sections, this was the most fun part to do because I really love creating like all of those kinds of flowy, fully areas where you have to kind of imagine how something would be twisting and where the lights and the shadows would be. So that was a really interesting part for me to try and create. And I started off just by putting down like a mid-tone base. I used a mixture of some kind of almost pastely blue and pastely purple, kind of mix them together, added accents of pink here and there, and then I decided to add in the lighter areas. And for the lighter areas, I mixed some of the white paint with some of the iridescent medium, because when you look at this, I wanted the effect that you had that kind of color shift, and that's what the iridescent medium gives. So I wanted on those very edges to have that slight color shift and that slight sheen. So I added those two together and it created a really nice formula to add to those edges there. And later on when it dried, I actually went over and added a little bit of the interference violet as well. So it added a little bit more color shift, just added a whole extra dimension to the jellyfish, which I was really pleased with. I also added some little areas of opera rose. Now, if you guys are familiar with opera rose, you probably would have seen it being like this really fluorescent pink. It's amazing. And I added areas of that and I just kind of left that undiluted. And again, I used that kind of technique where I just used the thick paint and just left it unblended and it created a really nice effect. Some of you might not agree that it looks good, but I really like this technique and I really like this method. And then it was time to add a little bit something extra to the jellyfish. Now I kind of liked it as it was. I wasn't really going to add very much more, but um, I was showing it to my husband and he was like, it needs something else. So I decided to add the kind of stingy areas because the inner sections, I believe, don't actually sting on a jellyfish. It's the outer kind of noodly bits on the jellyfish that actually sting you. So I needed to add those in and they were really difficult to add, let me tell you, because I didn't actually dilute my acrylic paint down very much with water or I didn't use like a fluid extender like you can get those mediums where it kind of adds to the fluidity of the acrylic and kind of makes it a bit more like the the golden fluid acrylic I didn't actually buy any of that to mix with my Winsor Newton paints so it was really quite difficult to get a nice continuous line to add in these kind of stingy noodles so those were tedious to add because I had to keep reloading my paintbrush and of course I was using a really small paintbrush as well because I didn't want these areas to be really massive and thick. They needed to be nice and thin and fine and flowy. So I just had to keep reloading my paintbrush which was a little bit of a pain but I got there in the end. But adding in the little stingy rays does actually give it a little bit extra. It kind of brings the pink down into the inner central ribbony sections. Don't you just love my terminology for this jellyfish? Some of you people who are really up on your kind of sea creatures are just cringing right now. I can feel it. I just wanted to bring that kind of pink area of the top of the jellyfish all the way down the canvas so it kind of just kind of draws your eye down instead of just focusing on the top because I noticed that when I was looking at this I was just kind of focusing on the top area and I just needed something that would draw your eye down further so it draws your eye down and it also just ties in that pink into the rest of the um, composition as well. The last thing that I did was actually went through and added a layer of varnish and as I mentioned in the beginning I had tried and tested this by adding in some iridescent medium so I could kind of get like a glittery effect and when you look at it like straight on, you kind of see 
the transparentness of the varnish but when you turn it to the side slightly you kind of get this pearlescent look and I really liked that in the test in my sketchbook so I tried to do that on the actual canvas but for some reason I don't know whether it was because it was on a canvas and not paper or I don't know what it was but my varnish was reacting with any anything and everything on the canvas and it was going into this really thick gloop I did read on the side that you meant to use a thin layer so I did wipe some off um, but yeah it was not pretty and I did kind of get a little bit of that kind of pearlescent iridescent nature to the varnish especially on the jellyfish that's where I kind of wanted it focused just on like the the head of the jellyfish and just kind of around the outside so it looks like he's glowing I did kind of get a little bit of that but it could have been pushed a little bit further I could have added a little bit more iridescent medium into the varnish but yeah that's the kind of effect that I was going for but yeah there you go that's my piece for this collaboration as I said I really can't wait to see what Sarah has done and make sure that you guys go and check out what Sarah has done as well again her link her channel link is in the description below for you guys but that's pretty much it for today. If you're new here and you haven't yet subscribed and you want to see more arty content like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe and tick that notification bell as well. I upload new videos every single Friday for you guys. That's it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!